So I'm going to play through my um, my version of uh, the Earl of Salisbury by the English composer William Budd, uh, who lived uh, at the uh, end of the 16th century, the beginning of the 17th century, so late uh, late Renaissance, uh, early Baroque, you know, if you like. Okay, this uh, this piece is a, a pavan. It's a stately dance played nicely, uh, nice and slowly, a steady rhythm. Um, I based it on John Remborn's uh, guitar arrangement, and I've transposed it up to the key of D minor. Uh, the reason being, I could keep um, I could keep some of his nice uh, chord shapes and uh, and harmonies. Now it's a really nice piece, based in D minor, as I said, typical of the period. Um, a lot of uh, D minor into A, so D minor A. Okay, we also need the chords F, uh, B flat, and uh, and G. Not much more to it than that, to be honest with you. It's a fairly simple piece, um, but we can see uh, the, the the beginnings of more sophisticated harmony in this after the Renaissance period. So it's very nice. Okay, so let's let's get into it. I'm going to get up close. Let, let's get up close, uh, so you can get a better view. Okay, so into bar one, and we've got our uh, bars D minor on the on the fifth uh, the fifth fret. And I'm going to play uh, second and third strings, and then twice the note D, taking advantage of the re-entrant tuning on the ukulele. So I've got the the note D there and the note D. And back to the note A, okay? So it sounds like this. And I'm going to play uh, my with my little finger, my pinky, the note F and the note A together, okay? So bar one. Into bar two is a barred A chord with my little finger on the note E. So like this. So here we've got our A chord. You see how I'm just switching there, the two, the two fingers, right, so. And transitioning up to a G major chord, I'm going to pluck uh, the second and first strings open, okay, and then second string first fret, so the note F together, like that, into a, a normal G major chord. And with my little finger, note C, to D and on the second string the notes F sharp back into my A major chord with C sharp and, and E and C sharp and E again but this time with my little finger on this C sharp and into a B major chord. Let's just run through that again. So D minor down to A, transition into G, back to my A chord, and to a barred D major. Okay, now the piece is in D minor, as I said, and we finish that passage with a D major. Okay, and that's known uh, as the Picardy third. The Picardy third. Um, Picardy third is when you finish a passage in, uh, in a minor key with the major. All right, so you may be, uh, uh, I don't know, playing playing a minor chord. And finish with that major chord. Now the, the, the belief at the time, in medieval times and in the Renaissance period, was that well? It wasn't the done thing to to finish on a minor on a minor chord. It was too sad, and uh, they wanted something to resolve uh, a bit more uh, a bit more happy. I don't know why. There's some kind of superstition. Now, why is it called the Picardy Third? Um, Picardy is a region in uh, in France, um, obviously well known for um, not being too far away from uh, from Paris, so a place where the kings would go to hunt. Um, beautiful chateau at, uh, at Chantilly, uh, for example. Um, does it come from Picardy? We don't really know. I, I don't think so. Um, some people would say, well, yes, there's a, there was a lot of churches and a lot of music was played. Um, the churches were dead against uh, this minor key, um, and that's why um, a lot of pieces finished with uh, with a major key. 
Another explanation well, it could be uh, just coincidental. It's not at all Picardy, but the uh, the old French word pica, uh, which means pointy, um, pointy or even spicy. You could say, you know, in uh, in other languages, you got picanti, which means a uh, spicy food. Um, but pointy uh, pica gives us the word uh, peak, uh, like a, a mountain peak, the pointy part of a mountain, uh, or even pike. So in that particular period. Um, you know, composers like William Byrd would have seen uh, uh, heads on pikes <laughs> that had been uh, uh, prisoners that had been beheaded. Um, and so pointy could mean like sharp, so maybe it's the sharp third. Again, there's no, there's no proof that that's true. Um, another explanation could be that there was an expression in French, um, a, a pejorative expression against the people of Picardy that's saying that they were cowardly. Um, and uh, so the composers were cowardly in, uh, in always ending their pieces uh, in a major key to appease the church because the church didn't want to hear that minor key at the end of the piece. Really don't know why. And uh, thanks to, uh, to Todd uh, Fiegel for uh, explaining to me what the Picardy third was because I didn't know that. I just learned that uh, a couple of years ago. All right, so that's Picardy third finishing. I'm just going to play through it again because I got distracted. And just finish then with my, those two notes of the D major chord. So A and so F sharp. Now then we're gonna go back into our D minor with my little finger on the note F. Let's just see what I'm doing now. Staying around this D minor chord. Okay, playing fifth on the second string, fifth to sixth fret, so A to B flat. And down with my little finger from F to E to D. Okay, so let's just do that again. And now we're gonna uh, hold the bar and play, uh, probably better with little finger, B and, uh, and D. And again, with my second finger. All right, so B flat to A, third finger on the G, back to A. And we do the same again, uh, so from B to D to C. There. Now what I'm doing is I'm barring uh, the three, three strings uh, with my uh, third finger and holding my index here. It's actually a B flat major seven. And back into my A chord. Okay, so let's just do that again. Take my finger off. Playing E and D together. Index finger on the note to here. And into A. Let's run through that again. And just finish there with those two notes. A and E on the A chord. Now we notice that, that um, uh, in this uh, particular passage, it's really nice. Uh, okay, and we see this, uh, this evolution of, uh, of Renaissance music moving into a more sophisticated uh, uh, harmony. So I've got D minor. And then I could, oh, almost, uh, it's almost an F major 7. I could play an F major 7 to, to a B flat to a major 7 to an, an A or an A7. Okay. And you can see that uh, you know, other composers later on would, uh, would, would take that, those ideas of harmony to, uh, to other levels uh, and even into jazz. So you could actually say, well, this is, uh, 
D minor to F major 7 to A major 7. Very pretty. Oops. And that's the end of part one. Now part one is, uh, is very sad and uh, despondent sounding. Um, and part two then uh, gives us uh, a little bit of reason to hope and it becomes much more cheerful. So it's moving into B flat. So I'm going to start with the note um, F and then play my uh, D and my B flat together. Slide that shape up to, so I've got my index on the D. Play the note to C open. Okay, uh, so I've got a C chord. So it's going to into C. Okay, take my finger off to play G to F. Alright. And I'm going to move up the fretboard now with uh, this little uh, this little shape of, uh, of C and uh, A. And sliding up to A flat. Here on the 8th fret and the 10th fret. I'm going to play that with, uh, with harmonics. And uh, this shape here, which is an F chord again. So that's uh, that's tenth fret on the fourth string, twelfth fret on the uh, third string, and twelfth fret on the first string. I'm not playing the second string. Drop down to the note G on the first string, tenth fret. There, okay, and into this shape here again, which is which is A and F, so it could be a D minor, I'm just playing two notes, back to my F shape, and back to my, my, my A chord, my A chord here, all right, I could bar it, but there's really no point, so, so what am I, what am I holding here, I'm holding the notes, um, uh, C sharp, A, and E here, Alright, so let's just let's just start that from the beginning, right? So I'm gonna go E flat C F B flat again C again F to D minor back to F and down to A Alright moving up and play the harmonics G to A here on the twelfth fret and then moving back down to my A major shape, I'm going to hit the, I'm going to hit this note here, which is D and F, back into A major, and then that's that's almost the end. Now walking up, D C sharp, back to D, up to E, F. E and, uh, e and C sharp again, back to the note D, with F, to my A major chord, just the C sharp and the A, little finger on the note C sharp here, and finish again with D major and the Picardy third. Okay. Okay, now when you do that little walk up, it's tempting to hold the shape and just slide everything up. Right, so it's a little bit more awkward. So I would um, I would finger it like this with um, first and second, and then move up with my third finger and second, and it's more comfortable to drop my little finger underneath there on that note C sharp, coming back with my index, 
drop the note F on the third string, down to my A chord, and that's finished. Rinse and repeat. Now tabs are available on my uh, Patreon uh, page, so please uh, consider becoming a, um, a patron and supporting me for five uh, five dollars. You can get the, the, the tabs and loads of others. Um, and uh, I hope you enjoy playing it.